Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and I'm your host on this journey through men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. And today, I want to put up an argument why I think every chap should have a tweed jacket in his wardrobe. This wonderful, versatile, chameleon garment, which can be worn in so many occasions, but has suffered something over the years with perhaps a more stuffy and negative reputation. Now I think if we look at the reasons for that, we can see the way that tweed is often portrayed in the popular media. If we look at things like Downton Abbey, very popular drama programme of a few years ago, pretty much one of the starring members of the cast was tweed because it seemed to be worn in every scene. And when we look at the royal family, when they're participating in hunting or uh, fishing or any outdoor pursuits, when they're at their, their estates in Balmoral or Sandringham, we often see them wearing tweed. Similarly, you know, when you look at any period image of the nobility or aristocracy in their country estates, they're always sporting tweed clothing. And when you couple that with, certainly in the UK, tweed often being seen as the uniform of you know, the uncool geography teacher or headmaster of the private schools, you would perhaps see why tweed, its reputation has taken a bit of a knock. But it shouldn't have, because tweed can be cool, practical, and a very useful garment to have in your wardrobe. Now, as ever, to better understand an item of our wardrobe, we need to look back in its origin story. And tweed has a rich history. It came into creation, as far as we're aware, in the 18th century. In Scotland, of course, where Scottish weavers would uh, spin virgin wool into a dense, thick fabric, which would allow them to keep warm in those cool, damp months in the winter time. Because, of course, Scotland is at the very northern point of the, of the kingdom, and it's cold in the winter months. Now, to help make that cloth dense and even thicker, they introduced twill. So that's the diagonal lines that we see in tweed. It adds more weight and more density to the material. And accidentally, it also became uh, the reason why tweed is called tweed, because then those diagonal lines, they're made of twill, and twill, when it was written on an invoice to an English merchant, he misread it as tweed because it was handwritten. And as a consequence of that, over time, it became known as tweed, and that's why we call it tweed today. Now, it was introduced to the aristocracy by a, no a noble lady called Lady Dunsmore, who um, used the locally used material of tweed uh, when she was on her Scottish estate. And over time, she introduced it to her guests who came to visit her. She decked them out in the local clothing of tweed, and that's why it made its way down into England. And, you know, you've only got to see images of the royal family on their estate in Balmoral, and you will understand why tweed is now popular. Because, you know, if the royals wear it, it becomes fashionable. And that's how it made its way into common wear over the years. Now, the success of tweed is nothing to do with its cosmetic beauty, although many of us will choose tweed these days because of the way it looks. But originally, it was highly successful and highly loved by people because of its practicality. Tweed is obviously made from soft, tough and rugged wool, which makes it resistant to the cold, great protection from the wind, and it's even actually a lot more water resistant than many other materials because of that springy wool which it's made of. It also has the advantage of being able to be produced in a custom style. So there will be different tweeds for different clans or different families in Scotland. And even today, if you approach one of the tweed makers, they will make a bespoke tweed specific to you. So if you choose carefully, you're unlikely to meet somebody else wearing exactly the same tweed. So whilst it is a highly practical and utilitarian fabric, in this day and age, it's also quite stylish and, you know, it will set you apart from perhaps other people in a room who are wearing a blazer or a traditional suit. Tweed has its place. Now, tweed has definitely undergone a revival in recent years because, you know, it is 
a garment which can bridge the gap between casual and formal quite readily because it can be made into many different types of clothing. You know, for me, I love a tweed sports jacket because it can be worn with chinos like I'm wearing today. It can be worn with jeans as if they were, you know, made to be together. Tweed has that ability of blending naturally with either casual or formal clothing. If you make tweed into a three-piece suit, it's as formal as you could possibly get it. Or, as I say, you know, worn with just casual trousers, you strike that nice balance of being smart, but not trying too hard. And because it has the ability to be nuanced by the various different um, twill diagonal lines, the colors which make up the tweed, you know, it can really be, you, you can find a tweed which suits your personality and your style very readily. Now, of course, you know, being a tough and rugged material as it is, it's perfect for outerwear. So if you make it into an overcoat, it'll protect you robustly in any winter, uh, you know, any winter environment that it chooses to throw at you. And of course, it even makes rather nice accessories. A tweed flat cap. I own one. They're great. They look fantastic with pretty much anything. Or a tweed scarf, tweed gloves, tweed tie. They come in all different shapes and sizes and they just add that little finishing touch to anything else that you're wearing. Okay, so I haven't won you over just yet. You're still thinking that tweed is traditional, stuffy, somewhat boring. Well, let me throw one more chip on the table. James Bond. I don't really have to say any more, but I will qualify the comment. If we look at James Bond, you know, the ultimate yardstick for men's style, in his earlier iterations, Connery, Roger Moore, uh, George Lazenby, Piers Brosnan, they all wore tweed at some point or another in the movies when portraying that classic adventurous character of James Bond. It's only quite recently, in fact, that Bond has stopped wearing tweed regularly. You know, in the modern movies with Dan Craig, we see him wearing extremely tight-fitted, uh, tailored suits by Tom Ford, which I perhaps are not necessarily the perfect thing for a gentleman who's in action and dynamic movement all the time. Tweed, on the other hand, practical, even somewhat camouflaged in an environment like this. You know, a perfect garment for an adventurous, risk-taking lifestyle. Now, when we look at Bond, you know, I think Sean Connery of all of the Bonds absolutely nailed the tweed look. And there are some excellent images of him and the Aston Martin where he just looks so rugged and so appropriate for his role. And that's because he's wearing tweed. So, something to think about. So there we are. I've argued that I believe every gentleman should have a tweed jacket in his wardrobe at his disposal for no other reason that they are practical and they are warm. And if you're interested in style, you know, tweed offers you, it offers you texture. It offers you color, a little bit of a pattern, which can be devoid when we look at some of the alternatives of perhaps say the navy blazer. It's very, very stylish, but it is devoid of expression. And that's what tweed offers you, something unique and individual to you. I think when you're approaching autumn this year, you should consider putting tweed on your shopping list because it will not steer you far wrong in the style stakes for the year ahead. Well, I do hope you have enjoyed this argument video today where I've put across the case for buying a tweed jacket. If you have, I would be honored if you gave us a thumbs up to show me that you've enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments which you'd like to share, drop them in the comment section below. If you're not a member of the channel, click the red button, subscribe and come on the journey with us in the future. So until the next time, take care of yourselves and I will see you again very soon.